In recent months, the Delta variant has been linked to a resurgence of COVID infections and is on track to become the dominant variant worldwide, putting many countries, health officials, and medical experts on high alert. There's been a lot of potential variants of concern that have brought it up around the world. And a lot of this is due to the fact that viruses mutate. That's what they do. But the big question is, are these mutations resulting in the virus being more problematic? By now, you've probably heard about the Delta variant, but for the sake of getting us all on the same page, a little recap. The COVID pandemic is caused by a virus called SARS-CoV-2, which is constantly changing as it replicates and spreads. These changes or mutations in the virus's genetic code result in new variants of the virus. Most of these have been found to either be weaker or benign versions of the original strain, meaning that the mutations didn't cause the virus to be more harmful in any way. But a handful of variants carry mutations that are associated with increased transmissibility and more severe cases. And those are the variants that experts are keeping close tabs on. So far, four of these have been identified as variants of concern by the World Health Organization. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Delta, which is the most recent addition to the list. Together, these variants are shown to be either more contagious, more deadly, or more resistant to current treatments. But of the four, Delta is especially concerning. According to The WHO, it's the fastest and fittest variant yet. Recent work out of Imperial College London suggests that it's actually up to 60% more transmissible than the Alpha variant, which was already 50% more transmissible than the original strain. And many scientists expect Delta will soon replace Alpha as the dominant variant worldwide. We're already feeling the effects, particularly with rates of infection steadily rising amongst unvaccinated populations. Delta is also sometimes referred to as the double mutant. This somewhat sinister moniker is based on the fact that two important mutations can be found in the variant spike protein. That's the protein on the virus's surface that allows it to gain entry into our cells. There are these 11 other mutations and we are systematically studying these mutations in isolation to try to get a better handle of are these other mutations playing a role and what role are they playing in terms of increased transmissibility that we're seeing with this Delta variant. Fortunately, past work by Dr. Krogan's team to study other variants is helping them better understand the mutations in Delta. The last year and a half, we've been looking at how the host responds to the virus. With respect to the Delta variant compared to the other variants, there's about the same number of mutations, but they're more spread out in the genome. In that way, maybe ultimately more human proteins in our cells are being manipulated in adverse ways compared to er earlier lineage viruses. That's one hypothesis, but at the end of the day, we've got to wait to see what the data looks like and, and then go from there. Questions abound, including whether the Delta variant impacts our health in different ways. There's been talk of it showing slightly different symptoms, ones typically associated with the common cold, like runny nose, sore throat, headache, but there's just not enough data to confirm this just yet. As we wait for answers, the global pandemic response is on track to remain fundamentally the same. Use all the available tools to combat the outbreak, which includes completing your vaccine course. That is, if it's available to you. In some countries, there are still no vaccines available at all. And if you don't have knowledge, then fear comes. So at the present time, I think you gotta take a deep breath, use the preventative measures we have in place, i.e. the vaccinations, and support the scientists doing the work and, and wait for the scientists to collect the data so that we can be in a, a better mindset going forward as new variants come along. It's important to keep in mind that vaccines such as the ones developed by Moderna and Pfizer remain extremely effective against severe disease caused by SARS-CoV-2, variants and all. And early results investigating their protection against the Delta variant specifically are encouraging. One UK study found Pfizer to be 88% effective against symptomatic disease caused by the Delta variant, while Moderna also found a modest reduction in neutralizing antibodies when their vaccine confronted the variant. These variants are providing us with a very valuable lesson. Right now, the lesson is to get vaccinated as quickly as possible. While the coronavirus is a standout virus in many ways, it follows many of the same habits of other viruses, namely that it mutates. We've covered mutation on the channel before, so if you want to dive into the science of how that very natural, normal process works, check out that video here. 
Make sure to subscribe to Seeker for more COVID coverage. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.